Hey guys, Brian Campbell here. I'm an um, associate professor of biomechanics at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. Rage and Cajuns, and uh, a friend of mine, an old colleague of mine from back in my Southern Miss days, um, Christina, uh, asked me, uh, Chris asked me to do this little video on muscle cramps, specifically exercise associated muscle cramps, and kind of what's really going on, okay? So I'm gonna try to keep this short and sweet and to the point, because that's what I do. I'm, I'm a so what kind of uh, professor. So the first thing before we get into the cool stuff is a reminder about this little guy. This is called the Golgi tendon organ or GTO, and it's found uh, on the tendons of every muscle. And the Golgi tendon organ's purpose, it's really cool. It's an insurance policy for a muscle. It sends inhibitory signals, basically telling the muscle, dude, stop. And it sends signals based on tension. So the more pull that the muscles pull on that tendon, the more the tendon's gonna be like, dude, not too much. Why? So that we don't rupture or, or tear or hurt ourselves. It, it's kind of an inhibitor chip to make sure we don't hurt ourselves. In fact, some of the early strength gains you get from working out is because the Golgi tendon org is like, oh, well, you didn't kill me that time. So I'm gonna let you go a little more. It's the break and it's needed and it's the linus blanket of a muscle because that muscle knows that my Golgi tendon organ is there to make sure I don't go too far, okay? So the GTO is gonna be very important to understanding uh, muscle cramps, exercise associated muscle cramps. So the bottom line is muscle cramps as we know it in sport and exercise is caused by fatigue, you're tired. Uh, the American diet, we get more than enough salt uh, you'd have to go weeks with to get hyponatremia. Kalemia is not even a, a factor, but just you'd have to literally devoid yourself of sodium for weeks. Our kids eat that all the time, so it's not a in it's not a sodium or electrolyte. They're tired, and think about it: what's cramping muscles that are tired? Your calves and your hamstrings, and you're on your toes, and 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 another thing too. We're going to come back to the GTO, but think of circumstantial evidence. Writer's cramp. Writer's cramp? You don't think someone's writing with their hand and all of a sudden they just like, bruh, I need some electrolytes. I'm, I'm, I need some, some pickle juice. Fatigue, tired, musicians cramp, writer's cramp. If this was a systemic sodium salt electrolyte imbalance, you'd be cramping random places. Your tongue would cramp, your shoulders. No, it's specifically the muscles that are fatigued, okay? This is the trick. This is the trick with the Golgi tendon organ. So the Golgi tendon organ is again, that linus blanket. It sends reflex inhibition. At Southern Mississippi, when people would cramp, the first instinct would be, well, I'm sorry, at UL Lafayette, I was an athletic trainer there. I'm a certified athletic trainer. Our first instinct is to what? Stretch them. And when do players cramp? They're on the ground. They finished a play, they made a tackle, they got tackled. Oh, they lock up, they cramp. So what do we do? We go and stretch them. What do you think that stretching does? You know what it doesn't do? Send electrolytes right to the area, right? You know what it does? It engages that Golgi tendon organ, the linus blanket. Hey, here's your emotional support <laughs> organ. Inhibitory relaxation, okay? Stretching does that. Now, the problem is, is your Golgi tendon organ sends reflex inhibition based on tension. So guess when you're not sending any inhibition? Guess when you're not giving that muscle, that security blanket that it, it craves when the muscle is on slack? That's why people cramp at night. When they've been working, my mom the other day, she was she was cramping at night. Come to find out she was working in her flower beds one day and she was tired. And at night, all your muscles are on slack. There's no tension in that string, There's slack. And your muscle being fatigued is like, where is my linus blanket? I need my inhibition signal. And so it'll spasm to literally suck up that tension and create tension. Like, oh, there you are. Okay, you see what I'm saying? So think about when players do cramp, there's slack. You've heard of PTSD, I call it post-traumatic slack disorder of the muscle. So let's think about how we can fix fatigue. 
Well, you condition your players. Well, that's great. But remember, in college, we learned how muscle recruitment ramps up. You use the slow fibers, then the medium fibers, then the fastest of the fast twitch fibers. Guess what? You only hit those fibers in the most intense exercise bouts. So in other words, what I'm trying to tell you is that there are some fibers that these players are not even recruiting until game day. You could try to recreate the intensity of game day in practice. Once the girlfriends and the moms and the dads and the lights and the music, those players recruit a certain level of muscle fibers they have not recruited before. And those are especially going to be fatigable. So think about it. We cramp a lot the first game. Next game, we don't cramp as much. Next game, we don't cramp as much. You know what hasn't changed in three or four weeks? The weather. But you know what has changed? Those fibers are more fatigue resistant. They're getting in shape. They're getting in game shape. In addition, angles are important. So you think about doing conditioning with players, running back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Well, they're only using certain motor units that have that certain motor program. So in the game, they're going all over the plate. They're cutting and juking and driving. They are recruiting fibers that they have never recruited before. Super intense, high end, high level, high fiber, twitch fibers, and angles that they haven't recruited before when we were trying to condition fatigue. So one way you could try to minimize cramps is have more high intense practices. Like uh, maybe for your simulated practice, uh, you have fans and you do it at night and you try to recreate game conditions to get them hyped up and, and, and to go all out and try to generate those high end fibers to not be fatigable. The trade off is the harder you practice, the more likely you may get injured. And that's another issue is that coaches are taking kind of trading off. Well, I don't want to risk getting my star players injured, so we're not going to go as intense so it's kind of one of those trade-offs, okay? So back to our Golgi tin in Oregon. One of the things we did at Southern Mississippi is instead of letting a player stay on the ground and stretching them where other muscles are on slack, get them up off the ground immediately. You make a tackle, get up off the ground. You make a play, get up off the ground because what's going to happen is, is when you get up off the ground, all those muscles are going to eat up that slack. And they're going to get what they want. They want that Golgi tendon organ inhibition feedback. So if you don't provide it for them, they're going to find it. They're going to spasm to generate that tension on that tendon. Get them up. Even if they cramp it, get them up off the ground. Now, here is something to consider. When else do players put slack in their muscles? Half time. Half time. Get off your feet, guys. Get off. Take a load off. Rest. Relax. You put those muscles on slack for 20 to 30 minutes and then go back out and play. So that's an issue as well. So, um, so again, muscle cramping, as we know it in football, is fatigue, being tired. And, how, and when you're tired, and so condition number one, the muscle's tired. Condition number two, they're on slack. And your muscle is not getting that linus blanket, that Golgi tendon organ inhibition that it normally feels. Oh, yeah, I have a hand. I taught a lecture today, and I used a face on my wrist. So what can we do? Stretching programs can help train the Golgi tendon organ. Uh, avoid slack in the muscles at halftime. You know, st keep, stay standing or at least minimize how long they're off their feet. Maybe not for a whole 20 minutes, okay? And I'm not saying don't push fluids because we know hydration plays into fatigue. But what I'm saying is they're tired. They are tired, just like writers cramp, just like musicians cramp because they are tired, okay? So I hope this little short video helps. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and uh, be well.